okay, so Lorette, you've maybe sold a handful of pieces <laughs> online and maybe sh packed and shipped a few in your in your lifetime. Lots, yes. Yeah, um, small, medium, big sizes. Yes, so I make an, a lot of things that are album cover size. That's kind of my thing because I love collage and there's a lot of experiments. Um, and I think that that's it's just what I like to do. I don't like medium. I like album cover size or huge. Mm -hmm. um, so I I ship often um, that that square, but I've also shipped all over the world um, huge paintings, uh, even room size paintings that I rolled up, and we can talk about that later because that's an option for saving money is rolling it. Mm -hmm. um, and I've built wooden crates for oversized pieces that need a uh, hard structure to be shipped overseas in. Mm -hmm. uh, so those ones, the larger, the definitely it's harder to pack, but you can do it. It's, it's, it's just a matter of time and patience and, and method. And we'll mm -hmm. talk about all that, but all sizes, you can do it. So you if someone can, orders a huge one, don't yeah. be afraid, be happy it's sold it's a bit of stress but mm -hmm. it's doable so say you've gotten an order for a piece that's we'll say uh medium sized or album sized what would you do to pack that so this is uh here I, I make a lot of this size it's a roughly album cover size and because that's what i sell the most of personally I ordered a huge pile of boxes. So I looked at different places online that sell empty boxes and I found, this looks awful lot like a pizza box. <laughs> and I bought a hundred blank ones and I just put that investment and it's in the closet. So if someone orders this size, there's zero stress. It's super easy and ready for me to um, work with. So for a, a larger sizes, I also have on hand in my closet all kinds of different cardboard that when I'm walking around outside or in the building, I see someone's recycling and it's a big piece or a nice looking box. I put that in my closet. And you can also go around to places like Best Buy and anywhere that sells TVs or mirrors and ask them, um for different size boxes so if there's a size you tend to work in frequently that might be your sale so having that on hand is handy right mm -hmm. so sometimes you don't know what the size will be and you can do all of that after um, it's just more stressful but there's also in every city there's places that sell boxes and you can order it it's more expensive than rigging it yourself with uh, found cardboard but it can it can be sanity saving because you know maybe you have a deadline you have to meet um there's one in toronto that i it's called the box shop they deliver um you just call them up literally because it's real people there it's not like u-haul or a shipping company it's a lady and her husband and he'll deliver it later i love them they'll bring you any size you want. And that's a, a great resource to have on, on hand. Mm -hmm. But for these ones, I have my boxes ready. Mm -hmm. No matter what, you always ship in a box. Like you, you would never take a canvas and then just wrap it and then put it in an envelope or something. In an envelope? No. Okay, always uh, a box. Right. So. If I'm carrying it down the street, I yeah. might just cover it safely. But, you know, you have to think of um, postmen throwing it around in the truck. Mm -hmm. You have to think of rain. You have to think of, I mean, maybe this item is $200 or 2000 And if it arrives damaged, you're not going to get that sale. Maybe you won't even get insurance depending on the company's coverage and what that does. So safety is the goal. Even if you feel like it's overkill, um, that's what you wanna aim for is, will this survive a nuclear disaster? The answer is yes, you're good, right? So that 
again, it sounds intimidating and time consuming, but if you practice, it gets easier and easier to do. Um, and if it's something very large, you will have to, most places won't ensure certain sizes unless it's in a wooden crate. Mm -hmm. um, once you get larger and that's just simply to protect to protect it yeah and i think that's actually from a like a client point of view like whenever i think of an online art transaction there are only two people in the world who will actually care about the condition of that art piece when it arrives and it's the artist and you probably even more so the art buyer like yes. art buyers are way more nervous about the art piece arriving on time is it going to be damaged like, what do I do? How do I hang? So I think to um, it's kind of a nice impression for the artist on that art collector to give them that peace of mind to see like a piece properly packaged. Because like, I think that's also another thing is like when um, an art collector is very like happy with their experience with an artist, they may buy a second, third, fourth piece from them because they right. have that like human trust that they know exactly what they're going to get and that it's going to arrive on time or not even on time nowadays with um, shipping, but at least arrive safely and and in exactly as they expect. Yeah. Yes. Um, all right. So let's get packing. So I think, would you say that this process could apply to that you're going to do right now would apply to works up to a certain size? Yeah, up to credibles. Okay, up to create. The concept yeah. is the same. It's easier for small because you can do it right here sitting on the computer. Mm -hmm. um, but the concept is the same. So yeah. the, the first thing you need is a tissue paper. Right? So you're you're gonna cover the piece. Um, this should be archival and all that, acid free uh, tissue paper. Um, especially if you're working in fine things like pencil, pastel, uh, oil painting, um, and you can buy that. So just look online for acid free tissue. Um, but if you use sort of plastics like a minor collage, it's not going to damage it. But technically, the best practice is to invest in the more expensive uh, acid free tissues. And then you're just going to wrap the thing up the way you would a Christmas present. The idea, of course, is to cover it safely. So uh, I'm not going to do that whole detailed thing now because it might take too long, but you get the idea. So the next thing that's important is corners. Okay. So for small ones, I make my own and I'll show you how it's easy. You need a corner on every corner. And with a canvas, a tissue corner is good enough. Yes. When you get to something larger, um, then I start making them out of cardboard. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I put the tissue and then the cardboard. And the, the concept is the same. You can buy them made in cardboard already online. Uh, maybe at that box place even. They're easy to make though. Uh, the tissue ones I'll show you right now. Um, and you practice, look on YouTube for a tutorial and just practice a few times. It's so easy. You, you fold the tissue into a square. Then you fold it into a triangle. Then you fold it into another triangle. Bingo. So you're going to tape one edge and put that on right there. What you have is this. Okay. And so you just practice that a few times. And soon you can do it with your eyes closed. It really gives you peace of mind because the corner are the most easily damaged part. And that mm. it just, you know, so now that's going to protect the piece nicely. You know, and then you'll tape around that. So you, you take your packing tape and the, you tape around that. So the next thing you're going to do is make a sandwich. Mm, so sandwich. Here you have two pieces. This is foam core. I get it at dollar stores, or you can use cardboard from um, the recycling. 
this is a piece of foam core and I, I cut it into 12 by 12s and have a stack ready. And then what happens is you put it on either side of the artwork. So if this is a bigger piece, see front and back are covered safely, right? Mm -hmm. If it's a bigger piece, you need a bigger piece of cardboard. So that can be harder to find. Um, and you might have to tape a few pieces together uh, to get that surface. But the idea again is just to provide um, structure and make sure that nothing can poke at the painting. Okay, so after that, then you take uh, packing tape and just make sure it's all nice and tidy. You know, it won't have these loose pieces here. And then you take the bubble wrap and you put it, you put it around, whatever's reasonable. And then you pop it in the box. Okay, and so that's not too hard. It, it's, uh, you just practice that a few times and it's super easy. I mean, even when you're making the corners from scratch and and so on. And now that's pretty much ready to go. So that's awesome. I, I, I've, I've bought a few art pieces in my lifetime and I can tell you that none of them have ever come that well packaged. Oh my. <laughs> my dismay. <laughs> so some uh, places won't, it's not insured if it's not packed like that. This is mm -hmm. a regulation packing for this size that I'm yeah. showing you. You could be even more careful. For example, if you're using glass, may maybe you're a photographer and you have a, a glass and that's much more fragile than my piece is. And so then you're going to use more bubble wrap um, and so on and maybe some spongy things to make sure that it doesn't bang around and you write fragile all over the box because then the delivery people don't um they they then they, they then they know right mm -hmm. so that helps them mm -hmm. so and i guess like even uh you know talking about insurance the even if they know I've, i mean i've also seen deliveries happen where it's more clearly marked fragile and it just gets like chucked down the porch but at least in a worst case scenario, if the work does get damaged, there's at least proof that you've done your yes. due diligence to try your best to warn them against yes. that. And then when it comes to kind of compensating for it, they can kind of attribute who's responsible for it. That's right. Yeah. yeah, you wanna cover everything. Yeah. Um, you know, the first goal is that it gets there safely, but if it doesn't, you want all your bases covered so that you're compensated for that, that piece. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so those items to have around in, in the toolbox are just tissue paper, exacto knife. Um, I have both clear packing tape and then the browner kind. Uh, the dark one is good. So any ridges or holes that way, then it's not transparent. You create a, an opaque space, but when mm -hmm. you want to tape the address label on, you want clear. And I taped the label right on so that it doesn't come off in the truck and then ends up going to Australia instead of, you know, whatever, like just take the whole thing on and then you don't have to worry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, include a little thank you note. I put a few cards, I always put a few because then if someone says, oh, I really love that new painting you got, yeah. when the people are entertaining, they're like, oh, that artist sent some cards, I'll get you one, right? Yes. Yeah. So, um, and then you just write, you know, thanks so much or whatever. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, but it's a personal connection. Definitely, especially when it's um, not being delivered in person. And maybe we'll touch on that later. But yeah, when you are just never maybe going to ever meet this person to really help establish that human connection and perhaps make a uh, long term fan of yours out of just like what was just a casual art transaction is a yeah, great hopefully. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I uh, yeah, like as a I'll say like as on the receiving end as not an artist, but someone who buys art, I can already feel how um, how you've packaged it already elevates the perceived value of the piece to me. 
um, like I've, I mean, I've bought works that were, you know, we'll say like a few hundred dollars, a thousand or so, and it's been brought to me like in a plastic bag, <laughs> like, and suddenly in my mind, I'm like, did I overpay you for this? Like, right. and it's funny how art's like that, right? Like the packaging, like if it shows that it's something precious, yes, it feels valuable and like a good purchase. Whereas if it's sort of like something that's not um, treated well, it's like, oh, if the artist isn't even respecting their work, why, like maybe I don't really care as much. Yeah, it's weird. Don't that deliver happens. it in a Dollarama bag, <laughs> like take the time. <laughs> no. Even if the packaging looks raw, like sometimes when you put all this packing tape and stuff and it's, it's okay, it's not that pretty, but the thing is that the safety is most important and that's protecting the value inside. So bubble wrap mm -hmm. is, is not, you know, couture um, and yeah. packing tape, but that it's secure and that's the main thing really. So mm -hmm. that shows that you value it and that you don't want it to get damaged and yeah.